Clutch Trucker filmed before a live studio audience, Rusty, the fuzzy and world famous Meatball Dog. Hey YouTube, Clutch Trucker here. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of the Clutch Trucker channel. Uh, yeah, uh, the main subject of today's video is... Yeah, some dash cam uh, idiots and ass wagons at uh, redonkulous roads I had to drive through. Uh, gee, in what state, you ask? Yeah, Pennsylvania. What do you expect? They've got some of the worst secondary and side roads going, yeah. And yet, they put all these warehouses down these tiny little roads. Anyway, I got proof of that coming up. Before we get into the meat of the video, though, I want to remind you... The FMCSA's new hours of service rules are going into effect Tuesday, September 29th. Yep, today is the 2nd of, uh, well now, yeah, we're after midnight, so it's the 2nd of September. So we're talking 27 days away. Count them, 2-7, baby. It's coming up quick. And uh, the reason I bring this up again is because I, I was at uh, the, stopped at the TA in Columbia, uh, New Jersey, on my way out of the New York area, escaping the freaking New York area uh, this morning, and was talking to another driver. He didn't even know that there was new rules coming into effect. His company hadn't even bothered to tell him. So uh, I said, hey, go watch my video because I, I explain it in detail. So I'm going to put the description down or the uh, link to that video down in the description for this video again, all about the new hours of service rules going into effect Tuesday, the 29th of this month, 2020. All right, when I originally did the video, uh, they had the date as September 28th. They bumped it up one day since then, so I've changed uh, the name of the video, but in the video itself, the, the date say the 28th. Just know it is actually the 29th. Okay, the first dash cam moron is, uh, this was actually last Friday, as I was on my way up to Lincoln, Illinois to pick up a load that was going to uh, Brooklyn and the Queens area in um, the New York boroughs area. Oh my God. Yeah, it paid incredibly well, and that's the only reason I took it, but I'm done. I am done with those. The Brooklyn and Queens and Bronx uh, area, forget about it. Forget about it. You don't freaking forget about it. They shouldn't allow trucks of this size in there because, you know, 90% of the roads you can't be on anyway. It was a freaking nightmare all day Monday trying to deliver. It was just... Anyway, back to what I was talking about, about Paris, France. Don't worry, I remember. No, all right. It's an old, very old Steve Martin reference from his, like, first comedy album. Anyway, okay. Um, yeah, I was on my way up to Lincoln, Illinois. Uh, we're in, entering a construction zone. The left lane is disappearing. I read the signs. I moved over behind another truck. And you can see it as the car comes up. And he's going to try to not only pass me, but the truck in front of me as his lane is disappearing. Moron. So here I am tooling along. Uh, I'm moving over to the right because there's already been two or three signs saying the left lane is ending as we're about to enter this construction zone. But no, no, Mr. Moron in the minivan decides he's going to try to pass me and the truck in front of me as right there is another sign saying the left lane's going away. And yet, look, here he comes. And his lane's uh, ending. Whoops, oh, there's the barriers. What am I going to do? I'll just swing over and cut off the truck. So I have to move to the right because this guy is a freaking moron. All right, and now look up here to the left, and there's a cop right there to make sure everyone's doing what they should do as I blow my air horn. What a freaking moron. Fucking stupid. What a fucking moron. Way to go, asshole. Alright, so then, uh, after picking up my load in Lincoln, Illinois, and then uh, a day or two later as I'm on my way uh, towards Columbia, New Jersey, where I was going to be staying that night, as I'm making my way into the Youngstown area, uh, right there off I-80, uh, heading east, I uh, came across this. Oh, there's a smashed car on that, that that tow truck's trying to pick up. That uh, that's a really smashed car. I see some skid marks. Looks like they went off to the right and rolled. Wow. And there's still some more up here, so they must have caused a few other vehicles to get involved in it. 
more disco lights, a couple of tow trucks. There's a big truck. Now they're putting down kitty litter to cover up oil or fuel leaks. Well, that probably was a nasty wreck. Okay, I've zoomed in and slowed it down right there on the right side of that tow truck. Look at that SUV. Completely mangled. He must have completely rolled. Who knows how that happened, but yes. Yeah, that car was pretty munched. So, uh, and with all those other vehicles, you know, it's hard to say whether it was just a one car accident or what, but yeah, that one SUV was just munched baby so anyway then Monday morning I had, to, I had I had to deliver at two Home Depots one in Brooklyn and one in essentially Queens New York which are both in the boroughs of New York and I you know when Bo came up with this load for me on Friday I'm like you know Brooklyn really really but it paid incredibly well it paid like three hundred three dollars and sixty cents something like that a mile to me uh, it was hard to turn it down and I should have but I didn't. Uh, so anyway, I got some a little bit of footage though of going uh, coming up to the uh, Verrazano Narrows Bridge, which we haven't seen before. So let's look at that. I don't know why it is, but every time I'm coming into the New York area, no matter which bridge I'm going over, they always seem to have at least one lane closed going over the bridge. And so here we are, as the right lane's going away, and that truck has to get in front of me as we make our way up over the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. It's an extremely high bridge. You can't really tell by this video, but it's way high up above the water. And to the left, you get a view of uh, Lower Manhattan, which I have in an upcoming uh, video here. So stand by and we'll take a look at that as we slide over the bridge. Yay! Like I say, delivering in Brooklyn and uh, Queens was just a freaking nightmare. Uh, here's a good example. Uh, to get from the first Home Depot to the second one, only uh, 11 miles away, took me three and a half hours. Three and a half hours! Because you can only take certain roads and it's just, you know, it's just a freaking horror show. I've got some other videos that I did a long time ago about being in Brooklyn and how lousy it is. So scroll way deep and you'll find those. I, I gotta see where Coney Island is. I, I always kind of wondered, because I had to take a route way out of the way to get to this Home Depot. I wish I had saved some of the video from that, but I, I or forgot to hit the button to do that. I was just more concerned about, you know, where the hell I was and getting to the right place and trying not to wreck and have anybody wreck into me. It was just a freaking horror show. And then after I did those two deliveries, I uh, del uh, had another pickup over in Long Island. Long Island, I don't mind so much because once you're past the main boroughs area of New York and out into Long Island, it's kind of like any other major, major city suburb. You, the, the, you, it's kind of like regular streets. The warehouses have areas you can actually, you know, be in on their own property. So I got loaded late that night and then was able to sit there in front of their gate overnight uh, until I had to leave the next morning. But where I say, I, at least for now, I am I am off of the New York boroughs area. I don't care how much it pays. Okay, million bucks, yeah, I'll do it. But shy of that, no. So finally left uh, Long, I Long Island this morning and uh, was making my way back into uh, Pennsylvania. Stopped there, like I said earlier in the video, at the Columbia, New Jersey TA and talked to that driver. Uh, but then uh, made my way. I had to deliver that load over into uh, Penn, Pennsylvania. And that's kind of in, in near Pittsburgh-ish, uh, but it's a tiny little town, and there's tiny little roads you gotta take to get there. And uh, when I was getting in, I had to stop and say, uh, you know, cause the GPS wanted me to take a left on this third street. And I'm like, yeah, uh, my truck can't make it down that. So I just stopped. And I called the receiver and said, all right, look, here's where I am. How do I get to you? And they said, well, it's not really easy to explain. Uh, we're going to send somebody out, and you just got to follow them. I'm like, really? <laughs> that tells me it's not good. And so here's the video, me following this guy in a pickup. 
and you can see how lousy this road these roads are tiny the, it's just ridiculous okay Pennsylvania I understand these plants and warehouses were built 50 to 100 years ago improve the truck access to them you can do that it's allowed you can make bigger roads make different roads make different access into these places but they don't do that in Pennsylvania all they do is just kind of repave over the same tiny little buggy roads they had from back in the horse and buggy days I grew up in Colorado I live in Wyoming now where we always had open space and lots of room and I, that just is so foreign to me improve the access it's 2020 for crying out loud Okay, now I have to explain what's happening here. He stopped because there's a sign right there to the right, and I'll put an arrow so you can see where it is, saying all trucks must slide tandems all the way forward to make the next corners into this receiver. Yay. And so he's coming out to say, hey, are you all slid forward? I'm like, yeah, I am. Because that's the only way you're gonna make it around these next two left turns. It's just freaking unbelievable. So, we now continue. Like I always say in these videos, it never looks as bad on the video as it really is in reality. As I'm turning to the left here, I'm having to drive onto the sidewalk, just missing that house, so that my trailer will make it around that corner. And then as we come up to the next corner, uh, you can see the uh, there's a train going by there. And the pickup makes the left turn. And there's a bush off there to the left. And again, I have to be as far to the right as possible. There's a wall in front of me. I gotta turn to the left. And then right after the wall, kinda edge to the right where it sticks out a little bit more so that my trailer will not take out the bush as I'm coming around the corner. This pickup there has to wait for me as my trailer is still in his lane at that point just so I can make it around that freaking corner. You saw that house right next to the road. Here's a building right next to the road. 
that's the way things always are in Pennsylvania. It's just freaking ridiculous. Finally, we're making it our way into the receiver yard, and this is where I gotta deliver my load today. <sighs> now I know some of you who uh, have subscribed to my channel ever since my buddy uh, John Branch did that article about me in the New York Times back in March about trucking and COVID-19. That's when I gained, gained a lot of subscribers from all over the world. That's why I always say Rusty is a, the world famous meatball dog. Uh, and I know there's a guy uh, who subscribes to my channel who's commented a few times and I think he's a cab driver in London. And I'm sure he's looking at the roads I'm going down going, yeah, that's nothing. What are you, what are you talking about? But here in the United States, I, I guess I expect, you know, <laughs> A little bit better access and stuff like that plus in in England they don't have the long nose trucks like we have they'll have the cab overs <clears throat> where their cab is over the engine that's why it's called a cab over and they don't have trailers that are as long either as we do and yet we're expected to drive down these roads that were not made for that anyway just kind of cracks me up okay so after delivering there in Penn Pennsylvania I had to wind my way up tiny little roads again all the way up to Johnsonburg Pennsylvania where there's a huge paper plant a Domtar paper plant Domtar one of the biggest paper manufacturers in the country and yet they have these tiny little plants in tiny little places I've picked up at a Domtar in Kentucky easy access nice to get into but here in Pennsylvania forget about it you know so from there near Pittsburgh all the way up to Johnsonburg Pennsylvania north of I-80 uh, north uh, east of Brookville tiny little roads you're up and down whipping all around winding all around 9% grades hello that's just insane hey, I love roller coasters I don't like to drive my truck down one but that's what it feels like in Pennsylvania but anyway like I said here it is now this is my new watch I, I like my new watch watch my previous video all about that uh, it is Wednesday, the uh, 2nd of September, 27 days away till the new FMCHA, uh, FMCSA, hours of service, there we go, rules come into play. Make sure you watch that video. I go into great detail and describe everything and all the changes and how it's going to affect us and it makes our lives a heck of a lot easier. Doesn't give us everything we wanted, but comes pretty damn close. It's not too bad at all. I've even got a separate video all about just the 30 minute break rule describing that in a little more detail after I got a couple of comments from people saying they don't quite understand that so I went into further detail about that I'll put both of those down in the description here in this video hey thanks for tuning in hey, please subscribe uh, please like please uh, ring that bell for notification uh, comment I do get to your comments takes a day or two sometimes because I'm working uh, as always sniff that magic YouTube fairy dust clutch out